Greensboro, North Carolina is a thriving city with a population of around 300,000. Our first stop in Greensboro is Maxie B's to start our trip off right with dessert. On to Gateway Gardens. We visited Greensboro in the past, but this is our first visit to the gardens. Gateway Gardens is 11 acres of beauty that opened in 2011, created and maintained by the city of Greensboro with help from Greensboro Beautiful, a nonprofit volunteer organization. Gateway Gardens is a great place for kids of all ages to sit on a watermelon or nestle among giant apples, fountains, giant man-made butterflies, whimsical birdhouses, and more. Gateway Gardens offers something fun to everyone. A gateway of building blocks marks the entry to the children's garden, and there's even a life-size giraffe. We were concerned that the gardens might be past their peak beauty due to our arrival in the late summer, but thankfully we were wrong. After this great start to our three-day getaway, we're looking forward to checking in to Double Oaks Inn for the next two nights. Completed in 1909 and now known as the Hardin Thomas Martin House, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1985. This is the bedroom in our two-room suite as seen from the door to the room. Beautiful old furniture here in the sitting room. The sofa converts into a bed if needed. We've seen some impressive restrooms during our travels, but this is the first with a clawfoot tub inside the dual shower enclosure. The backyard, back porch, and patio. We had dinner the first night at MJ's. This pimento cheese plate appetizer was outstanding. We enjoyed the Gateway Gardens so much the first day that we decided to visit Tanger Gardens the second day. Once again, our late summer visit not only did not disappoint, but the gardens were remarkably beautiful. A story session for youngsters was in progress during our visit. Sculpture is a prominent feature of the gardens, as is water. The old mill is a cutaway replica of what farmers used in the 18th and 19th centuries to mill grain. The student sculpture commemorates the Log College founded in 1767 by Dr. David Caldwell, a Presbyterian minister, physician, and educator in colonial North Carolina. The college continued until Dr. Caldwell's death in 1824. Back at Double Oaks, here's the view from the common balcony on the second floor and a view back toward the balcony from the other side of the 1949 Chevrolet delivery van. The neighborhood has other lovely homes as well, including a house of the Lord. As our three-day getaway draws closer to an end, we enjoy another excellent breakfast at Double Oaks, personally prepared to order by Chef Hug.